Let's go inside this carriage. You would need to do this for cleaning and to look for broken or missing springs, things like that. Special attention is given to how this row counter and similar ones work. Okay. All right, this is the trip lever for the row counter. Now I'm moving the lever just as if the carriage were passing by and it's counting off nicely. Now this dial does the same thing. So if you remembered, oh, I was on row 83 when I stopped, you can set it to 83. Now this dial is your reset dial. Watch. It's going to keep moving everybody, starting with the hundreds until we're lined up. See, now the fives are together. Now the sixes are together. Sevens, now the eights are together. And here we go back. And so to once you get three across, right. like that silly gambling machine, yes, <laughs> then it'll rotate to zero without counting yes. a thousand rows. That's right. It, this dial starts moving the hundreds. See, this dial, or the tripper, starts moving the ones. And inside of here, there's a lever going back and forth. When the ones gets to nine... That let, there's a special spot in that cog that lets it move both this one and the next one at the same time. It'll do the same thing. Let me manually get us up to When we get to 98 or 9. Yeah, yeah, let me get up to 99 real quick. All right, now, it's the same thing. There's a lever that goes this way. And it pushes the teeth on these number cogs. This is the same for every row counter, whether it's clipped on or horizontal or whatever. And then as it gets to a certain spot on that one's cog on nine, it lets it drop down a little bit so it catches the next cog over and moves it. And it's the same thing with the row counter on your garter carriage, which is counting the other way. You set 200 and it backs up to zero. Now, what it looks like is, we will take the cover off of the whole machine in of this case. Of the whole case. machine, and you see it's slotted here. Here's my indicator, my red straw. You can see it's slotted here and here, mm -hmm. so the cover is going to lift away from the row counter. That'll expose the row counter. Right. This piece of metal seems to be attached to the top of the carriage. So we're going to take these two screws out to take the row counter off after we get the cover off. In case you need to service it. Yes. We want to get the cover off. I've not had the cover off of this one, or at least I don't remember having the cover off. So what I'm seeing is these four screws here seem to be not recessed or like any of the other screws. So I've loosened them, and sure enough, you see what we get. Yeah, it's pretty clear they're the ones holding it. Right, so we'll go ahead and take them out, and we'll come back when the cover's off. Okay, of course, when we went to get the cover off, it did not lift off easily, so we had to wiggle and kind of turn it around, and I lifted it up to see why it wasn't coming off of these knobs. What we discovered is the knobs come right off. There's a tiny, tiny flat spot inside that knob. And that'll align it correctly that when aligns it goes it back. correctly. This one also slips off. So what we're going to do is take them off so that, and if you'll notice, they're not the same. Oh, good. But I'm thinking you could get them swapped around if they fell off. And so, you wouldn't want to do that, I don't no, think. No, we would not. And we'll, when we're going to put them back on, we will discuss that but look at here this guy was just laying there of course it's got a spring it went sprawling they all, love it they there's, just yeah, love I it know. here's one on the other side that's sprawling well, i couldn't see your hand can you hold it lower yes there, there. It is. yeah okay good. so we got two of those these guys fell out one on this side one on this side now I it's happen, pretty clear where they go. Yeah, well, because you can see them from the top. Yeah, there's a nice cutout yeah, for them. When you do it, you remember, oh yeah, those were there. Now here's the question. 
Notice that top is not level. It's not even. So did it go this way? Oh. Or did it go that Wait, way? Let me turn this a little. We're not okay. seeing you there. But this is what we're going to have to reason through as we put it back together again. That's later in the video. Right now, we have exposed the row counter. And what we're seeing is this. Can we see it? I'm going to zoom in. All right. I'm going to put my knobs back on. Now, this one has got one long, thin hole for the shaft. And I don't know if you can see down in there, but when you look at it, there's a little tang in the plastic. So it's only going to line up one way. Now, this is our reset. And let me work it. Now, you can see them going all around in right. triplets. That's right. Now, notice if I turn it the opposite direction, it does nothing. That's right. And it can give you the impression it doesn't work. Right. And it also it. starts to misalign numbers. Right. Now, I'm going to get right here and watch. When it gets to the ones, it loosens up. I mean, when it gets to the triple zero. Now, this one has a much larger Over here. outside hole. Yeah, we can see down in that one. With two flat spots on it. And, of course, this shaft is much larger oh. here. <laughs> there, there you go, point now. Okay, this is larger. This other shaft is the same all the way down inside there. So there's your difference in them. This one has that black plastic over the center shaft, which matches the larger piece. Okay. Right now, here we go. I'm going to be the road tripper, and look at my little catch right here. It's coming down, and it's turning. Now when it gets to zero, Oops, I'm already, let's see, i got to go, let me back up. We're going to start over again, so we're going to zero it out. That's good to remember how to do that. Right, well, so we And this, it. it may work the same on the inside, Jack says it does, but it doesn't function from the outside like a modern counter, because most of them, you can turn the numbers individually. That's right. Uh, some of them have a knob for each one. Some of them, you can turn them with your finger. But I'm just saying that the way that these work, it's always worked the same since the first counter was made way back when. But here we go. We're going to go up to nine. Seven, eight, nine. And see how it oh, brings its friend yeah. with it. yeah. I saw this little yeah, guy. this little guy turned. Okay, now we're going to go again. Let me do this the easy way. What are you trying to do? Oh. Okay, now. And once you... Nine, eight. I'm trying to get to a higher number. There you go. See, now it turns this guy when it turns. We're going to go to nine, nine, nine so we can watch them all go at the same time. And it'll start over again. You'll notice this wheel will not turn. That wheel right there will not turn with oh. the tripper until we get to nine. Then it turns the next one. This wheel... Wait a second. Why is it reading 909? It's not. It's reading 10. Here's the window here. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the wrong place. That's the window. Okay. <laughs> see, there it goes. See, here's my window right here where this one is. I'm showing you the window reading with the red. And so it says 13. Right, right. Now, it's going to do the same thing. Let me see if I can get it to come around again. With a high number. I'm going to go with 8. 
All right, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Now watch this wheel right here. Okay, it's doing something that one of mine, not this machine, has done before. Oh, misaligning? Yes. So tell us why, because sometimes I can make it stop, but it's just from ignorant fooling with it. I've never known how I succeeded. Okay. How you do it is to zero it out. See the zeros? Mm -hmm. So every time it misaligns, zero it out again, and then it'll start going like it's supposed to. What made to. it happen? I didn't see what you did that caused it. Uh, it's because I was working the zero knob and the trip lever at the same time. Oh, and time. you really shouldn't have. You shouldn't have, and it needs a little bit of cleaning is well, the thing. Well, yeah, no one's been into this in... 50 years. Forever. And actually, this is in, like, new condition. It may have been new, but 50 years is a long time to sit on the shelf. See, here's a couple of things to look at. That spring should be nice and firm, but it can stick in the down position. It can stick in the up position. And we can't see a thing. You got to come back now. Okay. Well, okay, I'm trying to chase you, but you're too quick for me. Okay. okay. You will notice there's a brass lever, wheel we see it, yeah. portion here, and this is steel. And anytime you have two different metals, they're going to get a little oxidation that make them tend to want to stick. But you see, there's our movement. So this is actually, this brass piece where my thumbnail is, is actually a stop cam. It's got a cutaway that when it gets to this upper position, stops the spring from working, okay? So you've got two movements there that can get very stiff, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a spring in here that I'm moving across. Ah, we got a glimpse. We okay. got a glimpse. That can also get a little corrosion between the spring and the shaft. It's kind of then unlikely that a person is truly missing parts, because where would they go? That's right. But they could have dirt or a spring that came loose or broke. Right. And you'll notice, let me point again, see the screw head right there? Okay, I'm chasing you again. There we go. Okay. If you take that screw out, you're going to get a major sprawling. Now, what I would... So you wouldn't recommend it unless mm -hmm. the thing is already a total disaster. Well... What I'm going to try to do is take these two screws out and move the counter off of the frame. You can see this piece. Wait, let me back up a little so we can see what you're doing. This piece comes down here. And it's bolted to the bed, I mean right, to the carriage. Right, it's to the to the carriage base. So these two screws should let us take the row counter off. We'll see what happens and what kind of sprawling <laughs> we get. Jen, just to add a little thought here, this is a Knit King AM3 machine. You probably saw that on the carriage. It's supposed to be almost identical to the Knit Tax 4500. In discussion with friends, I found out not perfectly identical, close, but not perfectly. But your row counter is probably made much like this. I would think they had, most of these manufacturers had a series of row counters and flipper components, and they just kept putting them into different configurations. They tended to be stable for a few years. Right. All right. I'm moving the trip lever, and I want you to look right here. This is a roll pin that's driven into the lever shaft, and that's what stops it in the down position. That little roll pin hits against the casing. That could actually have the tip broken off of it. And then it would completely malfunction, wouldn't it? Well, your lever would lay over in a position like this, against the knob and you would wonder why the row tripper isn't working correctly. I also want to point out right here, here is the spring end. You can see the straw yep, behind it. We can. That is actually controlling the tension on the rod. Now that spring That's a end, fragile little thing. Well, again, spring steel's tough, but 
a little bit of corrosion on the tip, and this mm -hmm. could be broken and flipped over inside of there. And again, you're not going to know, why is my row counter not working? Mm -hmm. And this is a positioning screw here. Again, a little bit of corrosion, or it could back out, and you're wondering why my row counter is not working. So there's little things you need to look for. Here's one more. Can't see. Okay. Let me turn, and I want you to look right in here, yeah. and you'll see a little silver spot. Hmm. Yes. Okay? That silver spot is a ball in a spring, and it's the tension ball and spring for the cog here that turns when the shaft turns. So, it doesn't act like it's working right because it won't stay in its position like it's supposed to. It's because that detent ball and spring is gone and you're never going to see that from the in outside and you can barely see it from the That's inside. Right. So if any of these parts is damaged beyond cleanup and use, where would a person go looking? They aren't available from the original <clears throat> source, I promise you that. All of these springs and the roll pin are standard items. You just have to measure it to know what the length of it is and the diameter of that. And what so, kind of a supplier is going to carry them? Fastenal is my favorite go-to spot. It, it's, it's a hardware item. Uh, the ball, Probably, however, not a neighborhood hardware store nowadays no, or no, Lowe's or something. Specialty hardware. But the ball and spring is also Your hands in the way. available by the size of the ball and the length of the spring. So these are common so items. They're really basically an industrial supplier, but they exist on a small scale. That's right. In fact, if you have the dimensions, you can go to your Granger catalog, which I think is now over 4,000 pages thick. And you can match it up in there. They have an online catalog that's a little easier to search. Okay. But we're going to start putting this back together shortly. This is one of the things that came out was this little spring and post. And I noticed if we put it here, it's got some spring tension against something underneath the carriage. It's the hold, no hold lever that's underneath there. And it also corresponds, if we set our cover on, to a cutout with a white button that popped out. With a white button that popped out. Now let's talk about the white buttons for a minute. We're going to look at this button. Can we see it clearly? Yes. All right. Notice that. Let me get. I can't hold but three things at the same time. Okay. Flat side with a lip. Flat side with a lip. Flat side with a lip, but this side is stepped. I'm and gonna it, zoom in a minute. And it's got very little lip right here. Mm -hmm. So we got to decide what's the right way to set this in the hole in the casing. All right. First of all, let's go with the little step to one side, and what we see is it actually won't quite fit in there. All right, so we know that the step must go front to back. We put with the step towards the front of the carriage, and we've got a little bit of slop in there. Can you see me moving it? Let me see. Your I hand was completely in the way. Yes, now we can. Okay, it seems to have some play front to back. Now, if we turn this around and put it in the other way, so the stepped area is now where? Because we can't see through your hand at all. Stepped area is towards the back. And we know it's the back because that's where the row counter right. housing is. Well, okay, we'll just say towards the handle. But now it seems to fit in there, and it's got no play in any direction whatsoever, so it can only go up and down. So I think we figured that part out. All right, here's another piece. And oops, look, it will also sprung. It'll fall right out, though it shouldn't. Ah, and we got to kind of wiggle it a little, little bit to I get I don't it think it in. got that shouldn't memo thing. Okay. Now, 
Let's look at it from the underside and we'll see it's got a center cutout and then two squared ends. So we pretty much see it's just a slide with a center cutout to it. And that center cutout is going to go over the top of these guys. So what we've got to do is, see you notice we've got our button oriented the way we said, sitting on top of its post. And when we put this lid on, we've got to make sure that the cutout fits these boxes and the boxes, see they'll twist. So Wait, I can't see the box twisting. The box will twist. Oh no! So what we want to do is, there's a post that rises up. Can we see that? Yep. All right. Put the post at the bottom so there's no tension on the post on both sides. Now your box floats just a little bit, but we know that when we put our slide in, we'll want the slide to match the box so that it looks like most of the opening is to the rear because the post is centered. Okay, so when we go to put this lid on, and we've got to go this way, we've got to make sure that these buttons, you can see they're in two positions now, but we've got to make sure that these buttons match their boxes underneath. Otherwise it's not going to set down right. correctly. So we determined how these go on, just like so. So this is the part where you get you got to have your other other hand moving things on both sides when you put it down. All right, what we notice is these sit up higher than those. Let me get my hand out of the way. Yeah, that'd be good. The little knob sits up higher than the box. So what we're going to do is start on the right hand side and kind of tease that one into place till it's in its hole. And then with our other, other hand, we've got to tease this one into place. Aha! Nice. Now, we're not all the way down on either side, so here's what we're going to do. Get it where I can hold it a little. Oh, boy. Look at that. The box lined up. And the other one I don't oh, think oops. is quite. Yeah, but you see what happens. Oh, you little, naughty little knob. The little guys want to get out of alignment. Okay, now, on the other side, and we're there. Okay, so now you have to rotate your head and your arms under there and put the screws in, right? Right. Well, now, what you got to do is you got to hold it in place like so. Keeping pressure with the pieces right. going now, together. Now, the weight of the carriage is on the, the base. So it's not so hard, and you can right. put those and screws in. Right, and I'm keeping in. some alignment, and then we're going to take a tool like this and we're going to wiggle it around till we get that lined up and we'll start a screw and then we'll get this lined up and start a screw. All right, things to look for when you're putting things back together. Now first of all, look at these two screw holes. This one is set way in from the outside edge as compared to this one which is... That's nearly right on the edge. Right. Now this one looks to be halfway the distance between the top and the bottom of this casing, whereas this one is set slightly up, and look, what is this? A dimple mark. Okay, so now when we go to put it in, did the lever go on this side? Did the lever go on this side? Is this a quiz? Well, I don't know. Ah, this is how we find out. This side is set lower. This side is set lower. This side is set farther in. This side is set farther in. Now let me show you what happens if I try to do it backwards. Well, those screw holes would line up if I could move it a little farther back. But as it is, you can you see that they're not lined up right? Not perfect. Mm -mm. All right, now let's try it the other way. And voila, I actually can line it up perfectly, and I've got a little bit of play to try and get it squared up. Is this going to hit the tripper correctly? It should. 
Now what this is our first screw and what I can feel with my hand underneath is I get to a certain spot and when I start to tighten that screw up I can feel this cover lift against the spring tension of those little posts and I don't want to pull it up tight. This is just like torquing an engine block head on. You want to get all the screws started. We've got another one over here. It's part of how you get it aligned correctly, am I right? It is. And to make sure that nothing's bound up once you... Now see right there, I can feel it starting to pull the cover to the bed. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to stop and come over here and get this one. When you work with automotive machines, whether they're big trucks or little trucks or cars and you go to torque two parts together you always have a torque sequence by which you tighten them up so that nothing binds anything else well, i'm sure quite a few of the men watching have done that that's right and now, some we, of the ladies not as many we don't need a torque wrench for this but you'll notice i've been using a little tiny screwdriver with a lot of advantage as far as very little action of my hand to get the screws to turn. Now I'm going to switch to one that's a little the coarser driver. More closely matched to the head of the screw. So here's my last inserted screw. So was that to keep you from accidentally over torquing exactly. previously? Yes. I'm going to start with my last screw and I'm going to snug it. Then I'm going to go to my next to the last screw. And I'm going to snug it. And I can feel the dial popping into place. That's underneath. good. Then I'm going to come all the way to this side. Notice that screw's way out now. Uh, we can't see it all. Your hand's totally in the way. There we go. See, that screw's way out now, which means we've moved the cover a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Yes. Now, we're going to snug him up. We haven't tightened anything up yet. But we're going to snug it till I start to feel the cover move again in my hand. And then we go back to our first screw. And you see, I it was pretty snug at the time. I'm trying to get where I can see the screw and not you. Okay. It there was pretty go. snug. Now, that's tight. Okay. We start over again with our torque secrets. I tighten it's this one. It's tight, but not the way you would tighten lug nuts on the yeah, truck tires, yeah, right? we're not torquing anything down. But what it is, is it's my left hand... And all I'm doing is gripping with my fingers like I was curling something up around the screwdriver. They're good and snug, but this is not... Well, you'll feel a spot when it stops moving. And that's where... That's when you stop. Because remember, these are screws going into, into plastic. plastic parts. Yes, you could you. kill them. You could. And what I usually do now, because I've done this so long, mm -hmm. is one thumb and one finger... And whatever that will do, that's where I stop. And you can use whatever finger you it's want It's going to be different for different people. But one thumb and one finger. Well, Jack put in a career as a mechanic, so some of the listeners will have different right. life experiences and sizes of hands. And but there we go. We've got it all put back together. We're going to put the knobs on it. Looks like our slides are working. Looks like our buttons are working. And so we're going to try it and see. Okay. All right. What we need to be sure of is that we have our knobs on our row counter in how, position. How did we figure that out? Well, because I put it on without them, and I <laughs> thought I would just slip them in. But what we find out is that the case, the cover goes into this slot. Yeah. So we've come right back here. out to do it. So we've come back out, which is really good practice for... Teasing everything into position, and so we're going to do it again. Okay. Nice. There we go. We're lined up. While we're on the subject of row counters, we wanted to show you how many of them are fundamentally alike. 
This one doesn't look a great deal like the one behind it that we just had apart, but it is a lot like it. This is off my Heimstricker. It's a Singer machine, but not the same Singer that later became Studio. This is the Singer that's related to Superba, and in fact, this is often called a suitcase Superba. And Jack is going to show you how similarly the counter functions. We're not going to go inside because we think it's basically the same setup, right? It is. It's the same thing in a different housing. And you'll notice you got two screws on the back to get into it. The, the difference is this has a knobs only on one side. But watch what we've got here. I'm the row counter. Click, click. Here I am. I'm counting my rows. Oh, wait. That's too many rows. I can back it up one. Or, oh, I got out of count. That should be row 14. So the near wheel right. to the housing the big is wheel the singles. And the little wheel, okay? On this machine, we had two different wheels. Left and right. Left yeah. and right. This one inside, outside. Inside wheel is our ones, and it'll go in either direction. Outside wheel is our zeroing, but look, it's not doing a thing in one Which direction. This confused me no end when I first got it, and I couldn't figure out how to zero the darn thing without knitting over to a thousand. Now here, this is where the similarity comes in. Watch, we go the other way, and it's going to keep clicking. Oh, now you see, it has two ones together now. Oh boy, it loves that. Now it has two twos, and then we're going to jump around in Once unison. you get a triplet, right. you can go to zero in a moment. There right. we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I'll just use this. I'm going to zip along here. Oops, went the wrong way. <laughs> Backed up to a million. But that's okay. Suppose that's where you are. Right. But again, you see you got a 943. Here we go. It's moving. Okay, it moved the ones until it got a match. Now it's going to move them both together until it gets the three-way match, and then we're back to zero. So you'll see the similarity between how they do what they do. Do you think the cogs and things are very much like inside? Yes. Would be subject to the same issues of yes, cleanliness, have, breakage, etc. Exactly. You've got springs for each one. You've got a series of cogs that when they get to the nine position they catch the next cog over. I wanted to show you this one because it's a, an absolute classic for machines of its age. I've seen a whole bunch of them on, what do you think, right about 1960? Yeah, there are a little before Le 60. I think this one... This looks more like a 1960 manufacturer mm -hmm. because look how they've got a stepped design with little raised I think, raised yes, areas. this one's lighter than this, but a friend who has one just like this said her says 1963 in some of the paperwork. So yeah. they they made them for several years, so right. somewhere but around there. You can see earlier with no complications to this molding, and then later they got extrusion molding where they could make mm -hmm. it really fancy. And of course, different brands adopted it at different times. And let me show you something while we're here. Notice on the one we were working on, there's a slot in the end of that post. There's a slot in the end of this post. There's adjustment that can be made on the length of these trippers to make sure that they line up and do what they're supposed oh to do. And we've run into it before where something was out of adjustment by just a little. Uh, but if we, it doesn't click every time, it's useless. That's right. So bear in mind, there is adjustment on these, and you're looking for these slots and cross points when you go along. All back together. Happily, it still works. I've got a pattern wheel in, so I'm going to hold my thumb down and see if it's selecting properly. And indeed it did. And now those will stay in hole, tucking, until I set a needle retractor button. It goes across. Now they're back to working position. And this time they should knit normally. 
Ta-da!